Hello, my name is Paul Chang. I want to thank you for coming to my channel. If you like the information that's here, please like and subscribe. Uh, we have a lot of information regarding different areas of the law, many of the areas that we do here at our law firm. So I'd love for you to become a subscriber. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email us at the office. Today, we're going to be speaking about a very unique issue, and that is wrongful termination. 6.2 million cases to 7.4 million. What is that? That's the number of cases in only a few years that California has. California has more employment cases. 50% of the 7.4 million cases that are filed are employment cases. Uh, why should it matter to employers? Well, I can be able to tell you that in wrongful termination cases, if the employee wins, they get a lot. They get their back wages, which is all the money from the termination all the way to the time of trial. They also get their future wages if they were allowed to stay at their employment, assuming that they haven't gotten a new job and employees are required to go get a new job. If you don't, that could be a problem. In terms of certain lawsuits, you're able to get emotional distress if the employee has suffered emotional distress and you're allowed to get punitive damages. And what punitive damages are is a multiple of the actual damages suffered. So let's say the employee suffered $50,000 of damages or $30,000 in damages. The punitive damages could end up resulting in $100,000, $150,000, $200,000, a million dollars worth of punitive damages, depending on the actual damages that were suffered. And in wrongful termination, you can also get reinstatement as well. If you wanted to be reinstated uh, to your company, you could also ask to purge your employee files. If you feel that your employer has written things in your employee files, you don't want anybody to get. So these are uh, why it matters. And, and, and also if you're able to win a wrongful termination lawsuit is that the employee can be able to get their attorney fees. So not only can they be able to get damages, but you also pay, have to pay for the other attorney fees. There was a lawsuit that I took over after judgment and the attorney fees on a regular damages, it was about $60,000, $75,000 of damages. It wasn't that much money. The other side was asking for $750,000 of attorney fees. I was shocked. You know, frankly, I, you know, I had told the client after I took over the case, I think it's an unreasonable attorney fees amount. Well, I went into court, the judge cut it down, but it was still mid six figures. It was still around four or $500,000 of attorney fees. So I don't want you to feel that just because the employee has a little amount of damages, that the employee cannot get their attorney fees, which could equal hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wrongful termination occurs when an employee feels that they've been terminated in an illegal manner. What is an illegal manner? An illegal manner, most of the times for wrongful termination occurs in two specific aspects. One, you're terminated because of a protected class. California has many protected classes based on your age, based on your religion and faith, based upon your sex as a male or a female, based on your race. A lot of people uh, feel that they have been racially discriminated in the determination of a wrongful termination. So there are many uh, classes. Uh, for example, uh, if you've been terminated because you're pregnant, uh, California has pregnancy uh, uh, classes as well where you need to be protected. There's also another subset of wrongful termination that is more generalized. And that is that the employer desires for you to do something that is illegal and you feel that it is illegal, uh, but don't wanna do it. And therefore you're wrongfully terminated. Now wrongful termination and retaliation, many of the times are synonymous with each other because retaliation occurs many times in the wrongful termination context where you're basically being retaliated against at the time of wrongful termination. So there's obviously illegal actions when you're hired, illegal actions while you are employed, but ultimately today we're talking about the wrongful illegal action at the time that you're told to be let go. Now in being let go, there's also something called constructive termination as well. And that's when you quit a job but you can claim constructive termination, meaning that you are forced to leave your job. 
and that forms a basis of what's called the wrongful termination. It's a wrongful termination umbrella. So in terms of the other common situation of wrongful termination is where an employee is basically told an employer, I don't want to do X. And the employer basically terminates them because they don't want to do X. And the employee feels that it is illegal. Now, there are cases that are out there in California that basically say that even if the employee, they were wrong about the situation, but they were terminated because of what they felt was to be a reasonably good faith held belief that the employee can be able to claim wrongful termination as well. So those are the common issues. In terms of the wrongful termination, you have to show that it is the but for reason over 50%, which is called substantial motivating reason. Now, it's not merely a motivating reason because that's very important. A motivating reason is one of many reasons. The substantial motivating reason is over 50% reason why you were terminated. If you were terminated because of a protected class and that's the substantial motivating reason, then you are going to have a good claim for wrongful termination. Now, many people ask in terms of wrongful termination, what do I do if I'm unhappy with my employer? Because what's gonna end up happening from the employer standpoint, which is totally understandable, the employer is gonna deny all of your claims of wrongful termination. My recommendation is always to write to your employer, either by email or by text. Now, why would you do that? I feel that many employment lawsuits, now we represent plaintiffs as well as defendants. And I feel that writing to your employer is a good opportunity for your employer to resolve the situation with you. Most employees, to my understanding, don't want to sue their employer. Can you imagine, uh, particularly with the way the internet is now, an employer that would hire you if you sued a prior employer? Nobody would do it. Nobody would do it if they found out that you sued your prior employer. Why would somebody, a new employer, want to hire you if you've sued somebody previously? But I believe that if you write to an employer and you have, you basically express your concerns, that your employer, once they're on notice, they would try to resolve the issue with you. Let's say that you're currently pregnant and you feel that your employer is discriminating, harassing you, retaliating against you because of your pregnancy. And you write to your employer and your employer writes back and says, well, we're not retaliating against you. We don't want to terminate you because you're pregnant. We want to terminate you perhaps because you're not meeting your goals. Well, if you were able to meet your goals, we could keep you. From an employee standpoint, in my opinion, that would resolve the question. And many times litigation occurs between the employer and the employee, but from the employee standpoint, because of the fact that the employee really doesn't know why the employer terminated. They think they know, but they don't know. And they, the employee drags themselves for two to three years in this very dark corner of what I consider to be litigation to find out the answer. Well, why not give the employer an opportunity to communicate with you, to resolve their matter with you? Now, there's also a benefit of why you want to write something to your employer. The reality is typically employees do not get good settlements in litigation cases because they have no documentation whatsoever to back up any of their claims, zero. And so from an employer standpoint, if an employee is suing you and there's no notice of any problem that the employee has had with the company, why would the employer give you good money? It doesn't make any sense. So a lot of people ask about what your obligations are when you claim wrongful termination. And I don't think that there's enough information about mitigation. What mitigation basically means is that you as a plaintiff, which is the employee, are obligated to go out and look for work. And if you don't do that, the jury can be able to find against the employee and reduce their damages. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're making $35,000 a year, $40,000 a year, and basically you feel that you're wrongfully terminated. What most employees do, which I completely understand, they sit at home, 
They think they have a million dollar case and they just litigate the case and just wait for the attorney. Well, unfortunately, damages are not like a car accident. A car accident is you get into a car accident and the damage is right there. You need to think about mitigation as a car accident with bodily injury. So let's just pretend you were in a car accident. You were in a car accident and you broke your back. You knew you broke your back, but you don't go to a doctor. And your back ends up just, you need a whole back replacement surgery. The defendant can be able to say, well, you could have reduced your damages if you went to a doctor. You could have had surgery much earlier. Instead of having a million dollar case, you could have had a $10,000 case. That's what mitigation is like. So if you're an employee and you've decided for whatever reason to sue your employer, mitigation requires you to accept a job. If you don't accept a job, the employer is gonna say, you're trying to inflate your damages. I've had that happen to me before. We were able to successfully defend a lawsuit because of the fact that the employee, they had every ability to be able to work. They did not work. They thought they were going to inflate their damages and we settled for very little money. I've also been on the plaintiff side where we had a very good case. The employee refused to go out to, to uh, you know, get work. And the case ended up settling for not very much because the law is that mitigation of damages is a critical component of your damages itself. You can be able to deduct money from actual damages when the employee really should have gone out to work. Many employees feel uh, that they have to be legal in America to work to be able to use the American court system. Uh, and in California, that's not the case. So you can be an illegal immigrant. And what that means is that you're not, you're, you don't have lawful residence in the United States and you still can be able to sue, whether it's through workers' compensation, here through wrongful termination. Um, an employer can't hurt you based on certain parts of the law because it's your civil right. So the analysis, for example, is that you would have to be legal in America and an employer cannot sexually harass you. And if you're illegal, an employer can sexually harass you all day. That doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't make any sense because it's your civil right. A civil right is given to you whether or not you're legal in the United States or not. And so employment cases many times are based upon civil rights. So you cannot be wrongfully terminated because you have, you're pregnant, you have a baby. You cannot be wrongfully terminated because you're Latinx, you are Asian, you're Caucasian. You can't uh, be able to be discriminated against or wrongfully terminated. It doesn't matter whether you are legally here in the United States or not. Uh, there's an evidence code on that. The law was passed on that. It's very strict. And I think that if an employer uses that defense to be able to win a lawsuit, uh, the consequences are horrible. And so, uh, you know, I wanna dispel that myth. Um, but there are other myths that I think uh, many people in litigation, particularly employment litigation, they don't realize is that it is very contentious, it is very hardcore, it is very nasty, and it's not a car accident. Employment cases are not car accidents. Uh, in many ways, you can get more money through a car accident much easier than you would get through employment litigation uh, because both sides are going to feverishly and aggressively litigate their case as well as they should. I wanted to thank you for today. If you like our video, please like it. If you want to subscribe to our videos, please do so. If you have comments, please put them underneath. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to give us a call. My number is Eric 626. 356-8880, 626-356-8880. Thank you very much.